Well, today on Nation of Window Cleaners podcast, we are going to continue the series on how not to have a website that sucks. So if you're a window cleaner or heck anybody in the service industry, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck and you want to watch all of the six and a half years of content because there's lots of it out there. Go back, listen, watch. It's anywhere podcasts are found and, of course, on YouTube also. And to start, I want to give a couple quick shout-outs. What's up to Brian Johnson, Daniel Mikola, probably butchering your name, man, sorry, uh, David Bennett, uh, Bennett, there you go. And those are just some guys that are awesome, and they uh, buy through me. Uh, wanted to give you a quick shout out. But again, we're talking today all about sucky websites. And as you know, I have to bring on the man himself, the guy who knows it all about websites. What's up, Mr. Bobby? How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. Loving this winter. <laughs> Mellow winter up here in the Northwest. <laughs> yeah, man, you guys have really had a uh, a pretty neutral year, so you haven't gotten dumped on yet, but either it's not happening this year or you're going to have a really uh, busy March with that. <laughs> Fingers crossed, man. Don't be jinxing me. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, right? Well, if anybody is living under a rock and they don't know who you are, you've been on the show now like three times, so, I mean, tell us who you are, what do you do, why should anybody listen to you? All right. Well, I'm Bobby Williams, Justin Monk SEO. Um, I know that uh, we've been on a few times, Window Cleaner Magazine. Absolutely love it. Love seeing ourselves in there. And uh, we, we do online marketing, websites. Uh, man, my favorite part is getting to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's good. I'll take it. Even though you're full of it, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. But, oh, whatever. Uh, yeah. no, man, it's always fun. <laughs> I know, right? You guys know when I, when I talk about... Um, SEO and stuff. I always throw you guys' name out. I've known you not as long as Justin. I've known Justin forever. And everybody goes, well, I'm talking to Bobby from Justin Monk. And it's like, but yeah, but it's Monk SEO. But Bob, anyway, you run the division. Uh, you're the guy, the brains. Both of you are awesome to talk to. So when people talk to you, they know you probably from the show in general, but a lot of other things. You're at a bunch of the events. And anyway, you're an awesome guy. Really good to talk to. So if anybody doesn't know yet, that's who you are. I appreciate it, yeah. man. That was way better than I could have done for myself. I'm not very good at self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. Well, you know, it's fun. Uh, I love talking about websites because I get probably weekly, I probably get four or five people to send stuff just on websites. I was even started a YouTube uh, show that I've done a couple times just breaking down websites and kind of found that it's the same issues that people have. There's just a lot of stuff that people put on websites and they build this thing themselves and they go, man, this is great, but they don't know really how they work. They don't know why they would put something. And again, we want to help people not have sucky websites. I know that's what you want to do. And that's why I figured you'd bring it on just to ask you some quick questions kind of in the website stuff. And almost all websites run on that same kind of idea, that same kind of feel and premise. I mean, you guys build a ton of websites, but it, it, it has a general feel and it's, it's not because the templates that are used, it's because that's how people connect with it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. I mean, there's a lot of templates out there and when you go out and look, there's a lot of structure is all the same, but there's a science behind that, you know, and we run into that quite a bit when somebody wants to go, okay, I want to get off and get something kind of crazy, kind of custom. That, that works great. You know, I mean, think if you're, if you're Apple, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, yeah. you want something that's really off the charts. For a service business, what's more important is, you know, phone number, contact information. Most people aren't there to, to sit there and browse and take a look at the latest product that you have or the latest service. They're coming to see, okay, how do I get a hold of this person? I want my service done. I don't care what their website looks like. I just want the service. So that's why these are structured the way that they are. Some people are going to read some testimonials, things like that. Um, that's why those are always featured. You're going to see that on pretty much every website that's in the service industry um, and yeah. other industries as well. So um, so that's kind of the reason for that. And a lot of people push to get away from those templates and kind of the same structure that everybody else is using. But there's a science behind it and the reason that everybody's doing it, the reason that every template is kind of the same feel. <laughs> So. Yeah, and you're not you're not looking at multiple sites at the same time and going, wow, they're, they're, it's the same kind of – what it is is that, you know, 
uh, uh, any type of advertising or marketing creates that intrigue where they go to the website, they want to find the number, but they want just something else to kind of push them over the edge, right? They like, yeah, I got the number, but like, just give me and and just do that on the front page is just to get them to call. That's where people really go. It's it's the time where people put those filler words and they're like, you know, at XYZ window cleaning, we're going to create a beautiful view for your future generation. And it's like, man, you're just filling it with nonsense and you're just you're not getting people to that point. They just want something to push them over, get the call and, and be done. And that's that look. Exactly. And that's, and uh, honestly, uh, at this point, all of our content isn't structured necessarily for the consumer. It's structured for Google. I mean, yeah. it's all about making Google happy so that you're showing up so the client can get your phone number. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand about websites too, is I see this stuff and they make it and there's these like, you know, I always joke that it's like uh, MS Paint with back in the day. I don't even think the thing exists anymore, but it's like, yeah, like you did it yourself and you're super proud. But like, as anybody else goes on, there's like a, there's no phone number. I don't know how many times people send websites and it's like, your phone number is this big. Like I want a number because if I'm pulling it up on mobile, if I'm pulling it up on anything, I want something real quick, scroll to the top. I got your name, logo and phone number and giant, giant letters, numbers. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's so many people. I've had people say, ah, we don't want our phone number in the, the top right corner. I'm like, you know, that's the first thing everybody's going for that and email. I mean, just, mm-hmm. the, you know, something that they can grab onto, click to call, click to text, whatever they're going to do. Uh, you want all that information immediately on the page. Yeah. And that's why it's the, the same field of these is because people genuinely know that at the top of the page is going to be all the info that they need. So they scroll back up. If it's not there, you lose them. They scroll straight to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. They don't see it there. They scroll straight to the bottom. If they don't see it there, then they're they're out of there. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And that's, I mean, again, these really super elaborate ones that people want to do. It's cool, but it's you. You're doing something that you were like, wow, I'm, I'm. Look at this thing I made, and you're trying to like show people, and it's like that. They're not. They don't care about that. No one. I had this is a funny story, but I had a guy here uh, one time who we had a like a. a block party type thing for our neighborhood and the mayor was there and the whatever and he showed up with his work truck to show the mayor and anybody who wanted to see all of his state-of-the-art equipment no one cares no one cares they want to make sure you're doing great but the mayor's like oh my gosh like now i gotta go lot it's oh wow this is uh yeah neat and it's like man he doesn't no one cares no one cares like we do you know so you have to portray what they want to know not what you want to tell people you know Exactly. And that's, uh, we just had an issue that we ran into with a, a design company and they had came to us for a website and they had a lot of ideas that we ran with and we set it all up and slowly but surely they're like, okay, well, you know, I even know this is our idea, but let's take this out. Let's take that out. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, they literally just had a video <laughs> and their header. That was it. And it was like, okay, now we have nothing on the page. We need something for Google. <laughs> <laughs> we went a little bit too far. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's just it's crazy how out of hand you can get really quick if you just start, you know, messing with stuff and, and changing it up. Yeah. And you said Google, but one of the things people don't really realize either is that the content on the page, not just the feel and the bounce rate and the, the SEO and all that, but the, the, the words or what are crawled. So it's dumbing it down, you know, Google Bing, you know, all these other search engines and everything else that index things, they have these crawlers that just basically see the information almost with AI kind of understand what it's talking about and then go, okay, if somebody's looking for this, this page fits that category, right? So when they build this and they put a lot of filler words, you're not doing anybody good. You're not doing good to tell people anything about the beautiful view and we're meticulous with the, and then you're not helping Google because they just ignore all that and don't know what your site's about. So tell me a little bit about words. Like what do you want to have on a page that actually get ranked and seen? Google likes information. They don't like pigeons. I mean, that's one thing that when I'm asking for, a, you know, a description of someone's business, I always say, don't sound too pitchy. Just talk about yourself. Give information. Yeah. Um, you know, just even free advice. I mean, you know, the little things like uh, a good example would be, when should I get my windows washed? How often should I get my windows washed? Things like that. Um, Google, that's what they're picking up on. They're more information based. And, you know, for a business, we're trying to get out there and we're trying to pitch and sell. But for Google, they're trying to deliver a good experience. And if yeah. they don't, the yeah. users are going to go elsewhere. So they've gone to a primarily information-based. That's what they go for first and then, you know, figure out the rest later. So yeah. uh, just, you know, little little pieces like that. Obviously, you don't want to tell them, you know, the best way to clean your window. You want to be the guy that they hire. 
but giving them a little bit of advice on, okay, this is the best time of season. You're not going to worry about the rain. It's going to last longer, things like that. Um, yeah. is, is usually the best pro- protocol for, for getting, making Google happy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to throw you a curveball here real quick. And you could totally say that you don't really know, but I'm going to ask you anyway. But when you type in a question and say the best way to clean windows, right? And they pull up and then there's like uh, an answer to that. Google finds it and puts it there and then indexes the site, but it's a whole thing. How does somebody get in that? I mean, should they be thinking about all the questions and finding those almost like keywords to to be able to put that information so that you're found for those type of questions? Or is that something that's in a different industry? No, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's the best way to go out and go about it. You know, asking questions to Google about, okay, who, what, when, where, why with uh, with your window cleaning phrases, you know, questions that you would think, you know, I mean, it's kind of tough because we're in the industry, right? We're the professionals. Yeah. There's a lot of things that, you know, I mean, even coming down to uh, industry terms that someone might not know. But thinking from a consumer standpoint, basic, maybe ask a friend that's not in the industry, hey, if you're going out and, you know, curious about window cleaning, what would you ask? Yeah. And using those those types of terms, because all those answers are all answered by websites. And if you get yeah. up at the top of that, People are going to they're going to see that they're going to click through to your website. They might read the article and then maybe give you a call, maybe go through the rest of your website. It's going to help on, on page time. And the more informational, the less bounce rate. They're going to spend more time on your page. And it's going to be good for you know the overall algorithm of Google. Yeah, it's it's crazy, too. People think like when you when you talk I, the window cleaner, window washer, where you're like, I don't see you indexing for any window washer. And they're like, but I'm a cleaner. I'm not a washer. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't matter what you are or think you are. It's what they're looking for. It's like water fed poles. If you put reverse osmosis, no one's looking that up. They're looking up like water broom or water stick or something. And it's (laughs) like, well, that's not what it is. It doesn't matter. That's what they're asking. So that's what they got to be found on. Yep. Window cleaner, window washer is the biggest thing. People always say, well, nobody searches for that here. And data does show, yeah, it might not, it's not as popular there, but it does search, you know, and it's funny how the difference from, you know, up here in the Northwest to down in Florida, you know, there's, so much difference on what people search. Same thing in the yeah. pressure washing side of things. Pressure washing, power washing, it's all regional specific. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And another thing I want to touch on in websites is what you said is like con- creating that content. There's a thing called a bounce rate, right? Like there's a there's a thing that when you go to a website, if you click on that website and you're like, oh, that's not what I need. And you click off of it, it knows that and goes, hey, this wasn't a relevant site. So you're trying to keep people on your site long enough to show that you're some value to that. How can you create value to somebody and stop that bounce rate? That's where that information comes in. That's going to help that a ton because with service sites, we're we're all kind of handcuffed to the fact that most people are just going for a phone number and email. So they're going to go out, they're going to hit it, and they're going to move on. Bounce rates are just something we've always had to battle since day one in this industry. So more information, informational, keeping people you know engaged, reading through. Um, you know, videos don't really capture like they used to. It used to be if you had a video at the top, boom, they sit there and watch the video, keep it up. Yeah. They don't want to see you clean windows. They just want to see you clean their windows. So. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't TikTok. They want to they wanna know that you'll do the job. They don't need to watch a satisfying video with noises and microphones that are closed. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah. Man. Okay. So I'm going to take a quick second. I want to let you guys know that this podcast, obviously, uh, shameless plug of the day, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. And I used to do this more in the beginning. I'm doing it kind of in the middle real quick. But if you need anything, please do let me know. My number directs 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. Call me. Text me. Let me put your orders in. And I also would love for you to get the magazine. It is awcmag.com forward slash sub is the magazine. If you don't have it, you're not one of the cool kids. So go out and get the subscription for the magazine and uh, and get all that. If you get any type of uh, uh, information from this type of content, you're going to love the magazine for that. So um, go and do that. Uh, so we did talk about, you know, bounce rates, which I think people don't really understand, right? Because they put this website and they just don't get how it's found. But we talked about bounce rate. We talked about words and crawlers, but how how are websites being found? Like how, like if you have a website and if I type in window cleaning in my city and there's those one companies that come up, there could be a company that's only a year old. There could be a company that's 20 years old. There could be a company with 50 reviews. There could be a company with zero reviews. Like what are they looking for? And how do I take my website, which is becoming less and less crappy as I build it 
by listening to these things, but how do I get that kind of scene? How, how can I boost that, that, that visual side of it? Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the biggest thing is going to be, the, it's just a popularity contest. It's what Google, they, they don't have any other way, way to understand what to show you. So yeah. they look for what are other people saying? Are other people talking about this website? Are trusted websites talking about this? You know, you get a link. I mean, Google is the most trusted website because it's their own. And yeah. so if you had a link directly from Google.com's homepage, holy cow, you're, you're a golden child, right? Yeah. yeah, but yeah. The, the problem is you can't get that. And so going out and creating relationships, you know, talking to your local business, uh, uh, better business bureau. Um, Chamber of Commerce, things like that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can get those kind of links. But more importantly, not, not going out and trading your links with your buddies. Uh, Google yes. doesn't like that. They see site A linking to site B and B back to A. They say, oh, these guys are just trying to game our, game our algorithm. We're going to get rid of it. Even more so, if you link from site A to site B to site C to site D back to A, that's just a big circle, big footprint for Google. So they see that and it, it just doesn't help. And sometimes it can even damage you in the long run. Yeah. I've seen websites where, you know, it's just, it's not going to come back for it. It's better just to get a new domain. Even if you move the same site over to a new domain, that domain's kind of scorched earth and you just move on from it. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I don't think that people really understand that you can destroy a website. I mean, Google itself is so genius. Like they are a billion, billion dollar company. Like, they're huge. Part of this, and most all their services are obviously free. So if they just to take you down for whatever reason, there is no recourse. They don't have to have you index at all, right? So like people think that, oh no, I do this, and oh, I think I found this way. And you have some, you know, like we were talking about before, you get some guy from India calling you with this accent so strong you can barely understand. Like it gets you on the front first page of Google for twenty nine dollars, and you're like, I don't like if you do that. It could hurt you as bad. Like you said, you can destroy a website to the point that it is completely gone. You get a new domain and completely rebuild because Google's basically gone. Yeah, this is complete garbage. They're not, you don't get it back. Exactly. And that's my biggest advice for folks is, hey, if you don't go with, you know, if you, anybody that calls me and doesn't go with me, I always say, hey, just don't go with the $29 guy. That yeah. anything less than, you know, uh, I mean, any cheap SEO like that is not going to do you much good, if anything. The best thing that they could do is just do nothing because then they won't hurt you. But right. I've seen people still using tactics that are 10 years old that are now considered spam in Google's eyes. I mean, they, the Google lays it out on exactly what they're looking for. You can go out and read their documents and they say, this is what a good website looks like. This is what we're looking at. This is what we don't look at. Um, and and the, the, the issue is they're still mysterious. They, they update, they yes. change things. And they aren't going to tell us exactly what to do because then everybody would be doing it and, you know, mm -hmm. manipulating Google. So And they're updating they're, like they're, every couple months. I mean, it's not like this is like the same, like, oh, we got it figured out. This is it now from here on out. Well, and that's this latest update that's rolling out this month with the Google business profiles is the if you have a business site, Google's kind of done that as a free service. It's a, it's a good way for a company that doesn't have a website, it's like a digital business card. And so you could just go in and click one button, boom, it produces this cool little website based on all your profile information. Those yeah. are going away. And now that domain, if you've been using on your business card or anything, it will just forward to your Google business profile. But you won't have a website. And for Google, in their mind, they're like, if you don't have a website, you're not legitimate. You're not a legitimate yeah. business. So um, actually, you know, uh, for, for anybody listening to this, if you guys are using that Google business profile site, uh, give me a call. I can, I can go in and I can build that back out for you. No charge. Um, we can build something similar and just get it put up. You'll need to buy a domain, but uh, we, can, we can get it put up for you quick. That way, you, that way you don't have any downtime if you're still, you know, if people are still looking for you and it might, you know, I'm, I'm, we don't know what's going to happen this month. It's, they haven't given even a date on when these are going to go away, but the profile itself, if you, your, your Google business profile with no website, they're going to look at that and say, Oh, we need to move them down. They don't even have a website now. Yeah. So even though they're doing it, uh, sometimes Google just perplexes me. <laughs> it's, it's crazy though, that they make a change that then changes what they see. Well, like, right. They take the site down and go, well, now you don't have a site. And it's like, because you got rid of my site, but they don't care. They're yeah. like, yeah, we needed some server space. That's it. Absolutely. And this, the number that I heard, this is going to affect 20 million businesses. I mean, wow. it, yeah, there are 20 oh, million God. businesses out there that are going to lose a website. So kind of crazy. Not, I have not heard of that until you told me either. So no companies, I mean, 
0.00005% of those people probably even heard this. The rest of them are just going to go, this is gone. Like, what do I do? It's like Google um, reviews and stuff where they're like, uh, uh, Google places spot is just gone. And they're like, what can I do? Nothing. Like send them a message, but that's it. Well, and that's, uh, that was one of uh, you know our strategies is that we would use that website to set up a second Google business profile. So you'd have two ranking in the same area. And yeah, a lot of those profiles now, it's, we've been, that's what we've been doing. It's scrambling to get these sites set up on a new domain, point it towards that so that they don't lose that, that traction there. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. And that's, it's funny because Google does send out their emails, but well, how many of those do we yeah. just, I mean, yeah. we probably marked most of them with spam, right? I mean, most of yeah. the consumers are like, oh gosh, Google again. The only thing you really care about is, hey, did somebody leave me a review? Did somebody reach out? like that yeah but they, they they've sent out an email about it and you know i read those so i'm like well so. well yeah and yeah and that's I'm uh trying to get ahead of the curve <laughs> yeah that that's one thing too that when people always ask me about like uh uh seo websites or even like accounting i know those are different things but like you're not going to know all the new tax code every year so hire a good accountant like that's their job then to do that you know it's like the same thing with all this other stuff is that a lot of guys put websites and it's the same site they've ever had. They've never put new pictures on it. They built it one time in their garage and they're like, Hey, it's cool. And they're like, Hey, look at ranks now when, you know, not in incognito view, but I've searched my website 30 times. And then I go search window cleaning in my area and then it pull up. Wow. I'm first. No, you're not. Your computer's yeah. remembering what you searched and it's just pulling up re refreshing searches. But it's, it's amazing how many pieces to the puzzle there are. And, uh, how easily, man, I feel so bad though. Some of the people with like these Google Place things that just get taken, like their competitors just like, you know, report them or something or these sites and it's just literally gone. And they're like, I put all my eggs into one basket. What do I do now? And it's like, and I, it's tough. It, I, there's, there's, there's nothing to do at that point. It's yeah. It really waited is. Too long. And, and it's, yeah. And that's, it's, and that's the problem with this. This whole thing is time. I mean, time in this industry, you know, you can always get your, you know, make more money. You can do everything, but you can't get back that time. Time is yeah. in, in marketing and especially in Google, you know, Google loves to see websites that have been out there. They love the age domains. A fresh domain is not going to rank as well as a domain that's been around for a couple of years um, out of the gate, I should say. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's the time is just, uh, that's the one thing. Wasted time is, is it's tough in this, in this, uh, in any business, uh, yeah. and not just ours. Yeah. And speaking of time with like websites and those guys that did put the pictures out, they built a website five years ago and of nothing. Obviously not only has the rules changed every month from then and the things they look at when they don't, but like how often should you be changing the content on your site? Like, you want it to be fresh and you want it to be new, but you say that the new stuff doesn't really rank. So in the content, new stuff is good. But what do you think? What What's a good, how often should I be updating my website with pictures and info and stuff? You know, it's it's completely up to you. Google, I mean, the, the biggest thing is having good data, but also fresh. So not just the, you know, your homepage, once you have that built, Change of stuff out on there isn't as big of a deal. You know, put in, put in the FAQs and things like that, answering some of those questions that will help with the info. But then yeah. building out, you know, other pages and other posts that are informational as well, that have good information that speak to where you're at. Um, you know, I mean, whether you know, if you go out there and you're, you're building out a window cleaning business for Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, you're, you need to mention Coeur d'Alene. If you're not mentioning it, yeah. Google really doesn't understand that you're there. So, and, it's, and right. even when you're going out and building those pages and your posts, you want to man make sure that you mention where you're at and what you're targeting. Each post, each page should be, you know, targeting. Okay, let's say just say window cleaning. We're going to have a window cleaning page for Portal Lane. But if you also do gutter cleaning, you want to have that gutter cleaning page and really spell out that that is specifically focused and not mention much window cleaning. You want it to to focus on that so that Google sees that because each page is a different separate property. It's not yeah. like your website ranks and that's it. I have plenty of websites that rank number one and number two with a secondary page. So, you know, making sure that you're clear and to the point and keeping it informational, not just pitchy, because that's, we yeah. all go there. <laughs> I mean, we're yeah. all, this, we're all sales, salespeople in this game. So it's, uh, that's the, where our mind goes. How am I going to get somebody to call me? And yeah. Google's the exact yeah. opposite. They're thinking, how, how do I get this person the most information? And they want to create the most value for the customers. They don't care about your business. They don't care about, you know, how much time or money you spend to do. They just care that the customer that is coming to their site has the absolute best experience, meaning that 
when they search something, they find the exact thing they need. So they do a lot of that work to just find that. If it's not you, they dust you off because there's 30,000 other people behind you. It's just that easy for them. It's nothing. It's the same approach we should all be taking with our websites. We should all be thinking the same thing. How do I give the best experience to my customer or to my potential customer so that they'll call me? Yeah. Yeah. So you got your um, uh, reviews page and say uh, your gallery page that you can always have that new content in there. New content can be on your Facebook because that stuff indexes also real well. And I mean, content wise doesn't always have to change everything, but you want to make sure that there's just new stuff and not let it sit there. It's basically what I'm hearing. Absolutely. And, yeah. and the other thing too, if you, you know, if you are rebuilding your website or, you know, I mean, if it's building the first time, it's not a, not a huge deal because you're going to, you know, you're going to build it and it's going to go along. But if you have something that's established and you're rebuilding, make sure you reach out to someone that's in the SEO field that you, that you trust that can help you guide you because there are ways that you can ruin those rankings by rebuilding your website. So yeah, um, there's all that mojo. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's super easy to do. I, you know, that's, that's the problem is that when I say somebody in the SEO industry, you know, there's a lot of great web designers out there, but I would say the majority of them don't have the SEO background and don't think about that. I mean, one of the biggest companies here in our area has no clue about one of the simplest things to do to keep those rankings. And we get the call. We always get that call saying, I just lost everything. And it's like, it's okay. We can get it back. (laughs) It's just going to take a little bit of time to figure this out. So, Dude, um, uh, just for another horror story, this is, I've heard this now twice. Uh, I don't know how common it is, but twice is pretty shocking, but it's website domains that they let lapse and then they don't have it either automatically done or whatever. And somebody, another window cleaner comes in and scoops their domain. Like you just lost everything because you didn't register it again that year. That, that to me is like mind blowing. It's it's crazy. And then typically what happens is if it's a powerful website, China, someone in China will buy it. They'll go in and they'll set back up a website and just kind of bleed out all the power that was in it and then let it go back. And, you know, then, you know, sometimes some people that understand the power of websites can go out and see, oh, this has really good metrics. But if they aren't doing the right checks, they don't realize it's been spammed and it's in this, and it's completely penalized by Google at this point. So yeah. um, that, that, and that's, that's, I've never had anybody do that in the same area, but I could see that if somebody was savvy enough, they could go snag up a website that expired in their area. I mean, heck guys, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty dirty. I've, I've never heard that one. That's, the last, the last, the last guy that told me about that is the guy bought it, and I want to say it was like on the first of the year, like refreshed. Some random guy bought it and called him up like a week or two later. And was like, "Hey, you let your domain like uh, lapse. I bought it. If you want it back, it's twenty five hundred dollars." Oh yeah, I, now I've heard that the ransom. Absolutely, that's a golly, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I would. I would just. I, I thought you meant somebody set it up as a competitor in the area. I was like, whoa, that man, that's okay. I just gave everybody an idea. Don't do that. Be nice to your, yeah. be nice to your competition. <laughs> that, that was the, the last, the first guy that I talked to said that his competition bought it and thought that he was going to just, anytime that anybody was there, it would change phone numbers and do all that stuff. Wow. Yeah, man. There's, that's crazy. That's never even crossed my mind. I can't believe that. Wow. This this is probably uh, a good maybe year or two ago, and he said that he was talking to, I forget it was Google or something. He f- filed all these reports with them and saying, "Hey, this guy," so that they're trying to bring the website down now because he's like, "Well, I know I'm not getting it back. I would rather kill that website so that guy gets nothing out of this." And that's super shady. Like, I don't know that I'd be able to not go have a visit with that guy. I'll tell you, it's called negative SEO, and it's a real thing. I mean, that's where a lot of these guys that are the twenty nine dollar guys. That's essentially what they're doing to you is negative SEO. They don't realize it. They think it's they they don't really care. They're just you know it's all a numbers game and get as many on board as possible. I get the call. We rank number one for SEO, and I'd get the call and they'd say, "Hey, you want to rank number one on Google?" I'm like, I mean, I know you haven't looked, obviously. Been there. So. Yeah. Well, they hope that by you know at least they get six months out of you before they realize you're doing nothing and they got a bunch of money. So, I mean, everybody's sure. got a scam. That's why it's so. I mean, even contractors in general, we, we get the name contractors. So we have to kind of almost over, over deliver because we already get that bad, you know, oh, you're going to take my money and not do anything or steal stuff or, you know, like it's the same thing in the same world. It's just, there's so many scams out there that people are almost like automatically looking for the scam versus like, you know, not. 
that's that's why we're in this business. We we got scammed by an SEO and decided to figure it out on our own. And what we thought was going to be a few weeks ended up turning into a couple of years. So it's well, not uh, not an easy path. <laughs> some areas, man, I'll tell you when um uh when I started my company in North Carolina, where I am now, it went to first page of Google within three months. Literally, blew blew my mind. The SEO stuff that you guys did, and that was with uh, Cartwright and stuff too phenomenal. Just, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And then when I tell that to some people, they're like, oh man, yeah, I'd love that to happen. And they're like, oh, where are you? And they're like, I'm in Houston. Like, oh no, no, no. Hold on a second. Like that's not <laughs> everywhere. Like there are some cities that there's just so much more mojo going on. And we talk about the SEO all the time because there's so many people who just go like, I got my website. What should I do? Well, I got to go door knock now because no one's calling. And it's like, well, no one can find your billboard. You put up a great billboard in an alley. No one's finding it, you know, yeah. where, you, you have to be seen. You have to be found. And it's a whole different thing in digital than it is in print. Yeah. And that's where, you know, we, our web design side of things is just completely a byproduct of the SEO. The SEO is where we started because I don't care, you know, I mean, and that's the thing. If you don't have a website, no matter how bad it is, just put one up, get one out there, yeah. something, anything to make Google happy. Because in the end, you can have the Lamborghini, but if it's parked in the garage and nobody can see it, what's, what's the point? Yeah. I mean, it's cool to have a beautiful website, but if Google finds find it on Google, you're not. The whole point of this is to to drive business. So yeah, that's uh, it, that's our first and foremost thought in every project. Yeah, if you're listening right now and you do not have a website, you do not have a business. You have a job. No one has a job. And then has a website for the job, right? Like you have to be legit. And there's certain things people go, well, it's not in my budget. I understand that. But there's things that you can do to get to that point to legitimize. And that's where everybody, like you have to think, how are people finding window cleaners? They don't go in the phone book. They don't hope they get some mail. Like that stuff all kind of helps to it. But the real way they do it is they go search on Google like you would anyway. Like what's the best pizza place by me? That's how you find stuff. Like you have to be found. So you have to have a website. Like you said, Google knows if you don't have a website, you're not a business because all businesses have websites, which is crazy being an old guy who came from the era of no websites. Well, and that's, I'll tell you what, we were too. And that's why, you know, the old phone book hack, right? Our, our company name, a pain in the glass, yeah. has an yeah. A in the front because it'll be number one in the phone book. So, yeah, how many uh, was, AAA uh, lawn care companies are there, you know? <laughs> that's right. Quadruple A yeah. bail bonds. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, I know you're younger than me, but you probably don't remember the angel fire days where you could build like your own website. And it was like these little, like, like gifts before they were nice. They were like little cartoon gifts and you'd have a site where there'd be like a bunch of like dancing, like squeegees or something in the top. And it would be like that cream colored pixelated, like, yeah, that was websites, man. You're like, yeah. This looks yep. so I good. remember those well. I, and that's yeah. it was funny. In, in junior high, I took a web design course and I was just jumping way ahead of people because I'd been doing it on my own. And my teacher was yelling at me to slow down. I already had music playing on my site and stuff like that. <laughs> and and uh, it, what, what worked really good for that was my when we went to MySpace, it was like, oh man, this is just like coding a website. This is all HTML. This is going to be fun. So everybody was always asking me, how do you make those MySpace pages? Can you make me one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, so, MySpace. Man. Uh, everybody's got a friend in Tom. So there you go. I know that's like my friend on Facebook just changed his profile picture to Tom. I thought that was pretty clever. So good. <laughs> so great. Everybody, old people know who that is too. Everybody else is like, who's know, that right? guy? It's like, uh, uh yeah, it was yeah. everybody's friend. I apologize to anybody that's, you know, maybe even five years younger than me. You probably have no clue what my space is all about. <laughs> oh, the good old days, man. Well, think about no, in 10, 20 years from now, people will be like, wait, what were they doing back then? And it'll be a whole other thing, you know. My kids, they have no clue. I mean, they when I mentioned MySpace, they're like, what was that? <laughs> they, yeah, no. it, It's just like, I, and then going and showing them, you can find videos on YouTube. It's pretty entertaining. Old MySpace pages, it was just so bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, we're, I know we're like way past already, but do you, do you ever go to like um, where you can go look at the archives of the internet? I forget, Wayback Machine. Have you ever done that and looked at stuff? You're like, yep. I, I looked at my original site. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, I was so geeked on this thing. And I look at it now and I'm like, wow, this is awful. Everything's got like that like embossed edge on the pictures and like, oh, it's so cringy. It was so cool at the time. I know. My first uh, my first website ever was I was 14 years old, so 99. 
and uh, it was 90, 98 or 99, did this school project and uh, it turned into this business actually. It was a local band promotion website and, and there was, I had people calling me saying, hey, do you guys promote shows? And we're like 14, 15 years old. We're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we just started trying to figure out how to promote a show and just yeah. run with it. And they're like, how much do you want on the door? We're like, you guys have it. We're good. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm just, we'll just try and get a show going. So, uh, I went back and looked at that one the other day. Oh man, that was the coolest website ever when we built it. And now I look at it, I'm like, oh, that was rough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every, everything has that cyclical thing and we'll eventually be there again. So, but either way, I like that yeah, you uh, can come on with us and uh, I appreciate you coming on again. I know I'm, I'm talking your ear off and we, we, we've done a lot of these and, and I apologize, but I appreciate you coming back again for all that. And again, if anybody doesn't know you, let me know, how can I get a hold of you? Yeah. All that stuff. Uh, and especially on those Google uh, profile sites, that's happening now. I mean, literally, as yeah. you're watching this, this is happening now. Uh, the, again, Google hasn't released the exact date, so it may be today. I, I really don't know. But we can go there and we can grab information and build you something quick. So, um, again, free offer, no no, uh, no strings attached here. Uh, just give me a call. My phone number is 509-280-6166. Shoot me a text. Give me a call, whatever, whatever works for you. If you rely on that site, it's something that needs to be handled quick so that we can uh, keep your clients fighting you. Yeah. Man, you guys are an awesome asset. I'm like, even even people who aren't buying necessarily from you, I know how many times you guys get calls and people just talking to you and understanding stuff. So just genuinely appreciate what you guys do for, uh, for us in the industry anyway. Um, but if you're watching and you need anything um, – SEO wise, website wise, dude, call them. You know, I talk about it all the time. They're super awesome. But if you need any supplies, if you need orders, I would love to put that in. Shameless plug number two of the show. Uh, I am a wrap for windowcleaner.com, the greatest place to get your window cleaning supplies. So I hope you call me and let me put your orders in. My number is 862 312 2026. That's a cell phone. So save it, text me, say, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I can do the rest for you. And I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. And it doesn't cost you a penny extra. So definitely do that. Uh, also, go to the American Window Cleaner website and get a magazine subscription because you're a nerd like I am. And uh, we should all nerd out together with some information. And if you have the magazine, you know your uh, competitor doesn't. So you're just one step above. So 69 bucks a year gets you a paper magazine shipped to your door, plus a whole bunch of stickers for everything. Go and get it, awcmag.com. And until next week, I hope your website is getting less and less sucky. And more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.